writing process for me can go in a number of different ways. Um, but one of the ways that seems to be the most successful is to keep going for as long as you can until you get stuck. And uh, Crockenbird was a case in point. I came up with the idea of a crocodile and a bird who thought that they were brothers, um, because I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, and then I just started to draw it, started to draw the picture book as if it was, you know, as if I was kind of turning the pages and they already existed and see how long I could keep it up for. Um, and as is sometimes the case when I write, the first half was just a collection of as many jokes as I could think of um, that would kind of result out of a crocodile and a bird thinking that they were related when they're not. Um, and then what happened, as often happens, and this is exactly how Slow Loris went as well, um, I got stuck, I couldn't think what happened next, I left it on the shelf somewhere. Um, and then this is kind of where the magic comes in. Then you pick it up a couple of months later when you've completely forgotten about it and you're reading through as if you weren't the person who wrote it, but as if you were someone else, just a member of the public, because you've completely forgotten about it by then. Um, and you kind of have that thing. I don't know if any of you have this same feeling, but sometimes when I'm going to the pictures or reading a story, I sort of get a feeling for what's coming next. And sometimes I'm proved right and sometimes I'm proved wrong. And sometimes I'm happy that I'm proved right and sometimes I'm unhappy, etc. So I was reading through Croc and Bird and I got to the point where I got stuck before and I sort of thought, oh, but I know what happens next. It's, it's obvious. I can see where this is going. Um, I thought, what's the most important thing to Crocodile and Bird? Well, it's each other. That's the most important thing to them. Um, so the obvious way to make an ending would be to take them apart from one another because then they've lost the thing that was most important to them. Um, and it would make a nice ending if they could be brought back together. Um, when writing Croc and Bird, it was almost like tag team between words and pictures. I would write um, side by side on the sand sat two eggs, for example, a bird, and then I'd draw a picture of a bird coming out of an egg, and a crocodile, and then I'd draw a picture of a crocodile coming out of an egg. Because it's kind of like when you're drawing a picture book, um, what is often telling the jokes is what's going on in between the words and the pictures. It's like if you just saw a picture of a, a crocodile bursting out of, of an egg, it might not make a great deal of sense. But somehow it's between the two. And especially um, like, for example, if you imagine like crocodile just standing there going like this with this tiny arm, you really need the words to be saying that crocodile is practicing flying there for that picture to be funny. When I look back on Croc and Bird now, um, I still have an incredible fondness for those two characters, for Crocodile and Bird. Um, I still love reading the story now and I still really identify with their struggles and um, their success in the end. Um, I think it also has a lot of personal resonance for me because it was the first book I wrote after getting back from illness. Um, and because it touches on things which I find so important as well about being able to judge people um, not by what you see on the surface, but by what's inside of them. Um, on the flip side, of course, uh, now I'm a big Star Wars fan, as I may have mentioned before. Uh, and some of you may be aware that uh, George Lucas went back and monkeyed with all his films because uh, he couldn't bear looking at them anymore. He just wanted to fix everything and make it right. And uh, he made a complete mess of it, just saying. But uh, I very much identify with that impulse. Now when I look at Croc and Bird, I see all the flaws and problems and faults and I want to just go back and redraw everything and make it right. But I know that's not how the world works. Croc and Bird was a moment in time and that moment in time has passed. So I must say it's still, of all the books I've written, I think it's the one that I love the most, that has the most meaning for me. Um, I know that it hasn't had the success of some of the others, but I think that it's probably the truest reflection in picture book form of the things that I find, the things that I care about most. And I think it always will be 
um, a very special book for me for that reason. I think of myself as being an illustrator more than a writer, and writing is something that I've had to learn to do over the years of my career. I've gotten better at it as I've gone along, um, to the extent where now I can write without illustrating alongside. Um, I'm comfortable working with text alone. And I think if I was going to advise anybody how to go on a similar journey, how to encourage children to write and improve their writing, I think that there's one thing above all else that you have to concentrate on. And that is when you're writing, you must think not about the words, but about what the words are saying. Because all too often when I read writing or see writing exercises, it's kind of like, like the words almost get in the way of the communication. You get fixated on capital letters, full stops, paragraphs, sentences. Yes, those things are super important, but if you want to encourage people to write, they should be very, very low down the scale of priorities. If you're a child like me, who really, really loves to draw and loves to make up stories, and maybe you fantasize about one day being the next person to write Harry Potter or the next person to make Star Wars or the next person to do something completely of your own, which would be even better. Um, there's really no great secret to it. There's no guarantee that you will be as successful as those people, but there is a guarantee that you will love what you do and have something which will be a gift for you for the rest of your life. Um, there's only really one bit of advice which makes any difference, and that is that you have to do it and keep doing it. Um, and when people tell you you're rubbish at it, you don't listen to them, <laughs> or at least you maybe listen to them a little bit and think, why am I rubbish at it? And then go and get better at it and show it to them again and see how they feel about it then. As with everything in life, if you love football, what do you think? You're going to get good at football by sitting on your bum? It's just not going to happen. You have to go out and play football. The same with drawing. Draw and draw and draw and keep drawing it and, the, and keep drawing. And the more you draw, the better you'll get. And the more other people will start to look over your shoulder and go, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs>